I've never hiked in this area before. This whole trip is one of exploration. It's autumn here in New Zealand, and while the track is open, we had a cyclone and no one's checked the track to see what condition it's in. I'm expecting there to be plenty of challenges along the way. I'm also expecting to see some beautiful waterfalls. As the track is likely to be overgrown, I'm expecting there to be trees down that I'll have to try and climb over or through. And if you look above me, you'll see the little orange triangle in the tree. So I'll be keeping a very close eye on these to make sure I am on the track. I've studied the maps really closely before coming in here. I know there's some other tracks that go off to the side and I'll be keeping an eye out for them. This is the first river crossing of several over this river and I'm glad for the bridge. It was necessary to go off the track because of the condition it was in, but the river's still nearby so I'm not concerned about where I am. Now I'm going to have to cross the river again, but this time there's a tree that's come down across the river and I'll cross there. This is limestone country and the river has a solid rock base to it. I could wade across, it would only come up to about my thighs, but it is flowing reasonably rapidly and I'd rather try the tree first. If I can keep my boots dry for a little bit longer, I'll be happy. I'm back on the main track, but because of all the rain, it's very, very slippery, and especially when you're going across the rocks and the moss, so I'm taking a lot of care. The first of the three waterfalls should be coming up shortly, so I'm keeping an eye out for the side track more incredibly slippery mossy rocks to have to walk over. The river is just to my left and this is the area where it disappears underground. I have to be really cautious. If I slipped into the river there, the next stop would be the waterfall. waterfall is in two tiers and if you look to that upper tier that's where I was just standing before. Now the scramble back up to where I dropped my pack off and continue on and find somewhere to camp tonight. I've been looking out as I walk along for a good spot to camp and this looks ideal. I'm right up on top of a hill so there's no concern about flooding here. I'll clear where I'll put the tent and I'll check the trees above. Because we've had a cyclone, I just want to make sure there's no loose branches up above me. It's going to be dark soon, so I need to do this quite rapidly to allow time to make my dinner as well. I keep all my things organised in my pack in these compression sacks which I find really useful.
It's not raining now, which makes putting up the tent so much easier. And I'll be able to hang my wet weather gear in one of the trees to try and get it a little bit dry. In the morning, I'll carry on hiking until I get to the double falls. Trying to work around the existing trees makes it a little bit tricky, but I think the tent will be fine. I'm so pleased to have the tent up without it getting any wetter and I'll be able to put everything in it and now start cooking my meal. I'm only just a few metres off the track. This is a great little stove. I like the way I can put the gas canister, the stove and my lighter all inside the saucepan and pack it all away tidily. It's been a long time since I had a cup of tea, so that's the first thing I'm going to be making. My head torch is providing all the light I need, but I'm conscious that the dark is coming and I do want to be able to go around the tent that one last time and just check all the ropes. Why does stuff always fall into my cup when I'm in the trees? I've brought with me a roast vegetable salad and I'm just going to cook some minute steak to go with it. I've not used this pan before and have just realised I've forgotten to bring the oil with me. So I hope it doesn't get too scorched. For breakfast I'll be soaking my chia seeds in some coconut cream and I'm going to be breaking apart some dried apple to add to it and on top I'll have some natural nuts to go there. As this is an overnight trip, I've brought liquid coconut cream in with me, but I also use the powdered coconut cream, which makes the whole thing a lot lighter. good as that. Breakfast in bed.
the return hike to the Double Falls and back is going to be several hours and I'm going to leave my tent up with all my gear in it and while I'm away the sunshine will dry the tent and it'll make it so much lighter when it's time to walk out. I did bring my dishes with me and now I've got the job of trying to wash them and get that scorched off my pan. And the best thing for doing that is just in the stream there's sand on the bottom and I just rub that against it and it's incredible how effective it is. I don't bring any soap or detergent with me for my dishes because I don't want to pollute the waterways. The sand has done a fantastic job, the pan is nice and shiny again. There's been a number of these trees that have come down and you've just got to work out the best way to get over them, sometimes around them, sometimes under them. You make it up as you go along. The day pack I'm using is actually the top of my large pack. As it's autumn, there's all sorts of mushroom and different fungi in the bush to have a look at. Now I've got to head way down this really steep track and the waterfalls are somewhere towards the bottom. This is the point where two rivers meet and again the one coming from the side is going to disappear underground and then join with the other. While I was off exploring the different waterfalls, the sun and just a little bit of breeze has dried the tent out beautifully and that's going to make it so much lighter when I pack it up and have to tramp back out to the vehicle. This is a loop track and I'm optimistic that the walk out is not going to be as tough as the walk in was. Ah well, at least it's not raining.